Today we're excited to welcome someone who is one of the most innovative technology experts of his generation. Justin McLeod joins us to talk about switching gears and founding Hinge, the relationship app that's changing the way millennials are dating. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's give a big welcome to Justin. <laughs> it's so fantastic to have you here. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. What inspired you to found Hinge? Are you a, uh, just a hopeless romantic? Well, sort of, actually. I, I started Hinge when I was in business school, and uh, I've been dating a girl, Kate, in college, and we'd broken up, and four years later, I reached out to try to get back together with her, and she said no, and I was totally heartbroken. I was like convinced we were gonna end up together, and uh, so I started Hinge the next week. I was like, I'm never gonna find someone as great as her, and I'm gonna build a dating app to do it. What does the name Hinge mean? Well, originally, it was all about, I wanted to create something like lightweight and simple for, yeah. for this generation to connect. Yeah. This was 2011, so okay. no dating apps, no Tinder, no Bumble, anything like that, and uh, so the idea was that we would make it a friends of friends experience. You'd meet that person you were eventually going to meet at that wedding or that house party. And so Hinge was just a term for like what connects what connects two people. It's always that friend in common. And so Hinge is sourcing people in front of you on the app who are somehow related to your network. That's how we started. Okay. We've learned over time that that is not always the best way to connect okay. people. But uh, that that's at our roots. And what's always been at our roots is the um, sort of authenticity that comes with meeting people in an environment like a house party or a wedding versus like a club or out there, of the street. Because there's context there. Exactly. You see people as real human beings, you interact with them like they're real human beings. We have photos which you can add captions to and then okay. we also have on our on our profiles we have these things called prompts which are short questions that lead to great conversations and we've optimized those over time to really help people uh, be a little bit more vulnerable and lead to much better conversations that will lead to a date. Well, Hinge is referred to as a relationship app, not a dating app. So is this some of the reason why you call it a relationship app instead? These days we really just say we're the app that's designed to be deleted. We're the app that oh. if you don't want to be using dating apps anymore and you're really looking for someone and to get off the app with, yeah. uh, this is the app for you. So how do you stay in business if everyone ends up leaving eventually? Well, what we've really found is that as um, every time we've made the app more effective, mm -hmm. uh, we grow faster. And it's yeah. because we're putting more and more people into the world who then tell their friends that they met someone on Hinge. When you set out to launch Hinge, um, there were other competitors in the space that were trying to put people together as well. You know, what did you do to stay out ahead? So we went through a big uh, reboot in 2016. Yeah. And up until that time, I think we'd really been focusing a lot on the competition and what were they doing yeah. and what were we doing and how do we differentiate ourselves. And the big shift that we made in, in 2016 was to start just thinking about the customer and stop, start ignoring the competition. And we changed our metrics really to be about how many dates are we setting people on? How are those dates good dates? We actually just launched a feature called We Met where people can, uh, after you exchange phone numbers with someone, we ask how the date went a few days later uh, because we're really trying to make sure that the dates are great, not that you're just matching with people. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you go about getting feedback. But yeah, that's one of the ways. So yeah. one of the ways is we ask your feedback after every single date. We want to know how it went, how it could have gone better. And that's a primary way, but we're, we're always listening to uh, we have a whole member services team that's relaying feedback to our product uh, team. You know, I'm wondering if you might tell us about your path to get funding and to make Hinge like what it became. It started very slowly. When I started in 2011, again, there were no other dating apps out there. Right. And people, a lot of VCs thought I was crazy. They're like, Match.com owns this market. You could never disrupt them. Uh, and yeah, I know it sounds uh, kind of funny yeah. in retrospect now. Yeah. And then when Tinder started to take off, then it was like we couldn't turn away money uh, fast enough. Yeah. I mean, it, it was really like the market clearly showed that it was there, and it was at that point a lot easier to raise money. And you mentioned Match because Hinge was acquired by Match. You were right. Yes, that's right. So, so what does it mean? Is acquisition like a paramount of success in what you do? 
Um, and, and also, what does that mean for you now in your role at the company? And when I think about success for, yeah. for Hinge and for yeah. me, it's about having the biggest impact possible. And I, I don't know if the match acquisition was what I set out to do from the beginning, but what it became clear is that this, they had the knowledge and the resources to really help us take this company and scale it in a global way. And they really bought into our mission and they've been incredible partners. And really my day to day hasn't changed that much at all. Uh, instead of reporting to a board of VC investors, I report to the board at Ed Match Group. Did you end up finding your wife on Hinge? Well, actually that person that we talked about in yeah. the very beginning, another four years later, um, I ended up flying over. She was living in Switzerland at the time, and I flew over right before a wedding and asked her to call up her wedding and move back to America with me. And she did, and we're, we're I know, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, oh my gosh, that's not the way that I, I thought you were going to answer yeah. that question. <laughs> you develop Hinge to get over Kate. Yes. And Hinge is thriving and up and running, but you decide to go all the way to Switzerland. Well, it actually and, solved and get her my problem back. indirectly because someone met on Hinge, a reporter, who then came to me and wanted to interview me. And okay. at the end of the interview, she asked, have you ever been in love? And I said, a long time ago, but I didn't realize it until it was too late. And she then had this very parallel story where she found her person 20 years later, and she's like, you cannot make the same mistake I did. Like, you have to do something about this. You have to, like, fly <laughs> over there and stop her if she has not married yet. And. Um, Long story short, I did, and she did. And, and then what happened to your Hinge profile at this point? Yeah, well then, now I'm still, I still am on Hinge uh, with right. clear wedding photos, right. and I'm always on there looking for feedback from of people, course. and that's another way that I actually get feedback from people. Yeah, it is probably very helpful to use your product and see how people are using yeah, it. Yeah, you got to. Well, I'm, I'm so happy that you found love. You are a hopeless romantic. This, I, this is insane. Yeah. It was a wild ride. <laughs> you should have seen it from this side. So. What are three words that you would use to describe yourself? Uh, I mean, it's the, th uh, the way the way that I would describe myself yeah. is the way that I describe our core values of the company, which are uh, authentic, courageous, and empathetic. Yeah. Those are the things that really drive us as a company and, mm -hmm. and that drive all our product decisions. I really enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, it was great. And, uh, now uh, we're going to switch gears, and we're going to play my favorite game called Hustle Time. We set a clock for 60 seconds. Okay. And we see how many questions you can get through in that amount of time. Okay. Yep. <sighs> Three, two, one, go. Most powerful emotion, anger, or love? Love. Which would you rather add to your life, time or value? Time. Meatballs or fish? Fish. Snapchat has a long life or lost cause? Lost cause. Do you floss every day? Yes. First celebrity crush? Uh, oh, Rachel McAdams. Chocolate, milk or dark? <laughs> Uh, dark. Which Hogwarts house would you be sorted into? Oh, I don't know the Hogwarts houses. First concert you ever saw? Not Slytherin. What? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, Pearl Jam. <laughs> Apple or Android? Uh, Apple. No cheese ever again or no sugar ever again? No sugar ever again. Go to cocktail? Uh, a old fashioned. Drive stick shift or automatic? Automatic. Number of times it took you to pass your driver's test? Uh, just once. Last person you texted? Uh, my wife. If a genie grants you three wishes, what would they wait? Oh my god, that's not fair. That's three questions. I know, uh, I know. <laughs> Uh, three wishes, uh, invisibility, flying, and um, uh, walk through walls. Time it takes to get ready in the morning? Oh, like three and a half hours. <laughs> Peanut butter, cups from cups M&M's? Cups. Okay, we'll count that one, we'll count that one. I know the genie one, it's a genie one. There's also another one, someone got two of them. It was the yeah. genie one for the three and three things in your closet. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Ah, uh, they didn't even make the podium. We ask every entrepreneur these same questions to see how people from different points of view and verticals and experiences answer the same set of questions. Great. Okay? Favorite part of your day? The morning. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Companies fail because founders give up. And don't give up, I guess, would be the corollary advice behind that. So, but worst piece of advice? Take the job at McKinsey. Yeah, because it's safer, right? Okay. How do you use your career to inspire others? Uh, what I'm trying to do is is build a team at Hinge that uh, people feel like really, really inspired to work there every day. And so I think it's about like creating a mission-driven company that's about serving other people, and that inspires others to show up. Ever felt like walking away? Oh yeah, many times. One thing you still need to learn? How to let go of control. What do you want people to learn from you? I think how to think about 
uh, really deeply what you choose to measure as a company. Like I, it's been such a huge difference between measuring what our customers want versus what we want. Like measuring people going out on great dates versus measuring like engagement, growth, retention, those kinds of things. What's next for you? Fatherhood, actually. For real? For real. Yeah, due in August. Oh, congratulations! Yeah. <laughs> Little boy. <Yeah. laughs> Who inspires you? Really, the answer to that is my team. I yeah. mean, my team shows up in a way, and they've like they've taken this company so much farther than I could have imagined, and they, yeah, they really inspire me to show up every day like they show up. Who challenges you? My wife, Kate. I mean, she's. She's actually like the most courageous person I know, whether it's like dragging me down uh, double black diamonds when we're skiing or which we just were doing a few weeks ago, even <laughs> while she was pregnant, she's crazy. Uh, or uh, yeah, like the she's so brave when she steps into these new life phases, like becoming a parent and that kind of thing. And it's like, it's inspiring uh, to me. You know what? I think she was pretty brave to get back on the plane with you in Switzerland. Yeah, not that, that too. Because I mean, that, that was... takes a lot. Well, I, I hope to have the pleasure and privilege of meeting her someday. She sounds amazing. You can, she has her own company, so you maybe you oh. can have her as another guest. I would love that. There are two questions that we, we got from our social audience. The first is from Juala, who met her boyfriend on Hinge, I have to say. She wants to know, how do you choose the prompt questions for Hinge? We started with just an assortment of, of random guesses of what we thought people would respond to and lead to good conversations. And then over time, we've actually, we sort of plot them on this two by two graph of um, which ones are people willing to answer and which ones actually lead to phone numbers exchanged and dates. And then we find this like vulnerability frontier almost of like the balance of what people are willing to answer, but what will also lead to great dates and really, um, and so we optimize those over time and try to like make sure we're getting people to answer questions that lead to dates. Now the second question we actually already covered because the question is do you have a Hinge profile? So is there one more from the crowd, from the live studio audience? I have one. We have a couple, let's, we have a couple, let's take a couple. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for that. Um, Karen's in our live studio audience today and what Karen is wondering is how do you keep people safe on your platform? Because today there is a lot of concerns around privacy and the creepy people out there. So how do you ensure that people are safe? I really think Hinge is one of the safest ways for you to date because you have a whole community of people vetting people for you. And so we have a report feature on the app, which we have a zero tolerance policy for anyone that gets reported. We also have the We Met feature. So we're actually okay. following up after every single date to see how it went and also find out if anything happened that you want to report this person for. And if so, then we remove them from the community. I would be shocked if the other competitors out there can say the same thing. That's outrageous. I did not know you did all that. Yes, and I believe we're the, we're the only app out there that is following up after That's people right. go on dates to find out. Like, Because mm -hmm. we care about, obviously, not just what happens on the app, but what happens off the app That's as a right. result. I think we had one more question from the crowd. That was awesome, Karen. Thank you. Um, Haley, what is your question? The, the like classic favorite that, I, that actually is one of the most effective questions is the two truths and a lie question. And okay. what, what really works on, on those are when you uh, answer a question that beckons other people to really respond and interact with you. So when you do two truths and a lie, there's an obvious next thing to say in response to that, which is to guess which one the lie is. Right. And uh, so that I think is like one of our, was one of our first guesses okay. and has standed the, the test of time as we optimize. Would you be comfortable doing your two truths and a lie? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I totaled a car at the age of five. I sank a sailboat at the age of 33. I dislike tacos. You sank a sailboat, it's a lie. No, I actually, I sank the sailboat and crashed the car. I love tacos. I know. <laughs> I had a crazy childhood. I thought that was an easy, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Well, you are just full of stories and advice. I hate to bring this to a close, but we're down to our last question. What you got? The question is from our resident pug Noodle. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Noodle has been single for quite some time. And uh, Noodle's considering getting back out there. His friends are on all the dating apps, but he's skeptical. And uh, what advice would you have for someone like Noodle who wants to get back out there, is nervous about meeting new people in apps, you know, but, you know, he wants to date. What do you tell him? Well, I think I'd say that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take and that um, 
Yeah, and Hinge is the best place, I think, really, because we're the ones who are really, for people who want to get off dating apps. Now, maybe uh, Noodle just wants to, uh, you know, get out there and play the field a little bit, which Hinge <laughs> wouldn't be the place. But if not, then then Hinge is definitely the place if, if, if Noodle's looking to find a relationship and get off dating apps. I wonder what is in his little head. <laughs> Playing the field, he's looking for something serious. Gosh, if we could only, There's apps for only that know. Too, though. Yeah, if, yeah. Only, if only we could know. Well, uh, I always like to end School of Hustle with a final thought, like a great fortune cookie at the end of a meal. So what I'm going to do is read three quotes and ask you to listen to those quotes and tell me which one resonates the most and why. Okay? Sure. Number one, if you believe it will work out, you'll see opportunities. If you believe it won't, you'll see obstacles. Number two, a year from now, you may wish you had started today. Number three, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Definitely the first one. Everything is about perception. And like when I, the, the times when I'm feeling expansive versus the times when I'm feeling like really contracted or like, I mean, it's just your perception totally defines your reality. And I think that that's, that really captures it. That first one you read. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope everybody enjoyed watching School of Hustle with Justin. I know I really enjoyed our time today. And if you did enjoy, please follow GoDaddy because we are bringing School of Hustle to you every single Wednesday. Full episodes on Instagram TV, YouTube, and teasers across LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram. So keep watching and follow and we'll see you soon.